Hi, I'm Nathan Lively from Sound Design Live, and if you are a serious live sound engineer today, then you need to have an audio analyzer. And I found that one of the biggest obstacles to getting started with sound system tuning is just getting that thing installed. So I'm gonna do that with you today. I've been using Sat Live for a few years now, but I've never used Smart. I keep putting it off because I don't wanna spend the money and I don't wanna have to figure it out. And I know that you're probably going through the same thing. So I'm going to get started with you. So all I did was I downloaded the Smart DI version two demo from their website. I downloaded the um, quick start manual here and I'm just gonna go through that with you. So I already actually did the install. So go ahead and do that part if you haven't already. Download the files and install them. And then I went to open it. And I'll tell you that the first time it didn't open and that and it told me that it was not a registered developer, so I had to go to system preferences, security and privacy, and then over here, uh, there was a little link down here where it said, we stopped smart from being opened, and I just had to click on open anyway, and now it's fine. Okay, so let's go to our first step. After launching DI, okay, so I need to launch smart, Okay, I was nervous for a second there. Oh, I guess it was thinking about all the different audio inputs that it had. Okay, so Smart is open. Next, I guess I can close some of these thumbnails. Hide sidebar, here we go. Now we can make this a little bit smaller. Okay, select your input device from the input device dropdown menu. Okay, here's it. Whoops. Here's input device. I have the RME baby face. Okay, and that's already good because I have a microphone hooked up to the first input. And so I'm tapping on it and I can see that I already have signal there. Okay, so that's going well. So make sure you can at least get through these first two steps. Um, it's the first steps of just getting everything connected that are the hardest I've found. Once everything is up and running, you're going to be fine. Um, so if you have a microphone hooked up and you're not seeing signal here yet, then make sure you have uh, your microphone hooked up to input one, audio audio interface, because um, it's not the same in SAT Live. I think it assumes that your first input will be your reference and your second input will be your microphone. But in Smart, it looks like it's the other way around. They assume that your first input will be your microphone and your second input will be your reference. Your device must be connected and powered on before Smart is launched and be recognized by the application. Okay, and by your device, they must mean my audio interface. Okay, great, so I think I've completed step one. Step two, if you're using Smart's integrated signal generator, and yes, I will be, route its output by accessing the signal generator options. Okay, so I need to route the signal generator to the output of my audio interface. So I'm gonna to go to options, signal generator. Options, signal generator. So what do we have here? Pink noise, level, period, cycle. Okay, device, this is what I need because I need to route it out of the baby face. Okay, that's good, not in any of these others. And I need it to go out of main analog one. That's fine. So I'll just know that I need to connect analog output one to um, my mixing board or to my speaker. Generally, it'll be an, a channel on my mixing board, right? I'm at home just testing it right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna plug output one directly back in to input one. I believe that's what I did. No, input two, because input one is the microphone. Um, so I just have those looped, and I would pick it up here, but I have everything connected down here. So my Army Babyface has four XLR um, IO, two ins and two outs. So on the first two inputs now, I have one is the microphone, and number two is just the output. So I just 
whoosh, loop those together. Um, so that's my reference signal. And the speaker that I'm measuring here, since I'm just in my office, is gonna be my headphones. So I actually need to route the aux output to the headphones. And I guess I can check that real quick by turning on pink noise. Let's see. Yep. I hear it. It's pretty quiet, but I hear it. Okay, so I think I was successful with that so far. Select your device and appropriate output channels. Okay, I did that. The first two inputs of your selected device will auto assign to Spectrum to DI's two Spectrum engines. The first two inputs of your device go to the Spectrum engines. Okay, so that must be what this is. It says Spectrum, line one, line two. Great, so we can see line one is the microphone and line two must be um, the input that I looped back in that is now the pink noise. Use the in engine drop down list menu if reassignment is needed. So I don't think I need reassignment, but I guess that's where I would do that here. Um, let's make this a little bit bigger. Oh no, I guess I could do that here. So I could switch these and instead of this green input being my line one, it could be line two, et cetera. So another trick to making this easy for you every time is you need to make the setup part when you're working on live events, you need to make this fast. So decide on what these are gonna be, make it work for you, and then just never change it. Okay, that's what I do with my setup. So I just plug it in, it's the same setup every time and I don't have to worry about it and there's no problems. The Spectrum engine, the Spectrum engines correspond to the measurement green and reference blue. Okay, great. Measurement green, reference blue, got it. And that is the transfer function. Okay, great. Use your mouse to select, or other pointing device, thank you, <laughs> to select the triangular run button to begin generating spectrum data. Okay, let's try it, uh, the triangle. All right, there's some spectrum data. So I guess it's just picking up my voice right now. Check, 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 there it is. And if I hit measure on this blue one, there's nothing there because I'm not measuring the pink noise yet. So what if I turn this one off for a second and just look at the blue one and turn on the pink noise. There we go, so now we're just looking at um, the spectrum of, that's just a microphone cable. Okay, direct loop in and out. And let's see if we can put this on top of it. Okay, so now we can compare in blue, the microphone cable versus green, um, what's coming out of the headphones. So it looks like they're not exactly the same, right? There's a little hump here. It disappears down here in the low end. And there's another hump here. And that's what we're gonna do, that's what we're gonna have our transfer function do automatically for us is compare those two. So let me turn that off. Okay, we have those two going, what do we do next? The circular button to the left of the run button represents that the engine's trace color. Okay, this looks like the sentence is a little bit messed up. The circular button to the left of the run button represents that, oh, I got it, represents that engine's trace color and show hide state. Okay, so we can show or hide it. So it's still running, but we're hiding it. It's still running, but we're hiding it. And I guess then this turns it off. So it's hidden and it's not running. Running, hidden, got it. So that's just how you hide it. Great, things going well so far. The transfer function engine is configured based on the spectrum engine inputs. Uh, and we have that set up correctly, so hopefully the transfer engine will work as well. The first green spectrum engine is a measurement input and the blue spectrum engine is the reference input 
for the default transfer function. Green, blue, measurement input, reference input. Got it, that's how we have it set up. Selecting the triangle run button to the right of the orange trace show hide button activates the transfer function engine to begin computation. Changing the spectrum input assignments reconfigures the transfer pair. Okay, so same thing over here, um, but we're not looking at the transfer function yet, so we need to go over to the transfer function. Use the view presets, the spectrum or transfer buttons in the control bar, blah, 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 to look at all these different things. Okay, so the transfer function and spectrum are the main ones that we'll be looking at. And so obviously those are accessible up here, spectrum, transfer, spectrum, transfer, or we can, looks like we can click on them down here. So we're in spectrum now, and we're gonna click over to transfer. Let's make this window even a little bit bigger. Okay, so then I guess we can try transfer functions. So let's, and nothing happens. Uh, looks like we're missing some pink noise. So we have, you can see we have signal here, but no signal here, so go. Okay, great. So as I said, I've never used smart. I don't know what any of this stuff is, but I'm gonna just give a guess. Um, this looks like, our impulse response window, uh, this says right here, phase, and this says right here, magnitude. Okay, so we've got amplitude here, phase here. Um, so it looks like it's working to me. So what do we do next? Audio application, sound level calibration, microphone sensitivity, monitoring spectrum measurement, Feedback frequency identification. Transfer function, let's do that. Setting an equalizer for a loudspeaker. Aha, we need to find and ins insert the reference delay. And we can do that by pressing D. So let's try that. D. Did it do it? I don't know. Okay, this looks different now. Let's try again. Where is it telling me what delay it's added? So um, yeah, this is potentially what those headphones look like, right? And I know now that I can go through this in more detail to understand some more of these functions. But basically, I just wanted to show you that in a matter of how long have we been recording? 10, 15 minutes, we, I got set up with this, right? The hardest part really was doing the routing of making sure that I had uh, my, ref, my measurement mic coming in on one and I had to do this loop thing to get my reference in on two. And if you had a mixing board, that would be um, a one more step, you wouldn't just be doing a loop, you would be doing uh, a copy of the output from your mixing board back in for your reference channel. Um, but when you're just getting this set up at home and you just wanna learn like where the buttons are and go through the quick start manual, just do the loop out, it's totally fine. And now I see that I have my tr transfer function going um, and I'm ready to go through the rest of the quick start manual. So I hope this was helpful for you. And as I learn more about SMART, I can do more of these videos for you guys.